Hello and welcome to the advanced character setup tutorial for Bloody Mess Positional Data and Dismemberment. In this tutorial, we are going to be setting up this zombie by Pixel Tiger that you can get for free on the Asset Store for dismemberment in the Bloody Mess system. I have, as you can see, I've already gone through our first tutorial series and set him up identical to how we did it in that one. If you have not done the basic setup for a character in Bloody Mess, you need to go back and do that tutorial for your character or else you will be lost. <laughs> so uh, we're going to get started with this guy and, and getting him ready for uh, dismemberment. Alright, first thing is we need to open up his character setup script. Alright, we're gonna uh set his name as zombie. Doesn't doesn't really matter. Load saved, we're gonna leave that open. Let's get his hierarchy here. We need to get his renderers right here, which is a collection of all his different renderers or his skin mesh renderers. I'm gonna drag that to right there, the renderer's parent. Top order of his top layer of his skeleton is going to the skeleton parent. We aren't using pooling. 10 is fine for that. We want to use an automatic ragdoll. So we need to add a ragdoll. This is our ragdoll right here. Zombie ragdoll. But we can't just drag one from the scene. It has to come from a prefab. So I've already made a prefab out of him. So I just need to drag him right there. Alright, let's set up a couple of health values. We're going to put Head health should generally always be the same as your max global health. But what we're going to do, since when a character loses its head, it's usually going to die. Unless you're doing a character that can have its head blow off and still keep, you know, walking around. Or maybe a zombie gets its head blown off, and then there's a timer, and then it dies. So, uh, let's see. I'm going to put that at 100. But for the rest of these, I'm going to put them at 1. The reason why is we want to be able to test the actual dismemberment without, you know, killing the character. I'm going to put those at 1. And then I'm going to come down here. That's fine. Leave it there. I'm going to put these at 1. So they all receive equal damage. Now, on to the part that we didn't do in the last chapter. Or last video, sorry. We need to say, do we want to use head dismemberment? Yes. So now, we need to have a head model. And we need to have your uh, head skin meshes. And we need to come down to the colliders and put the head colliders. So, we look at our model. Our head is one piece. So all we have to do Go back up here. Go ahead and lock this so we stay on it. We go to our size right here for the head. Not 10, 1. Drag the head mesh in there. Good to go. Now for the head colliders, there's actually two. We consider both the neck collider and the head collider as head. So both of those need to be part of their colliders. So we're going to go down into the hierarchy. We're going to grab the head and the neck. Good. Alright, right hand colliders. We are only considering one right hand collider. And that is actually the right hand. We'll go ahead and fill out the collider first, and then we'll go back and do the skin mesh render, skinned mesh renderers. All right, left hand colliders. We're gonna grab the left hand. Oh, we gotta give it a size of one. Grab the left hand. 
right leg colliders is one. Both of these are one. Both leg colliders. Let's go up here. Actually, no, I'm wrong. Both of them are two because we have both a calf and a foot. And both of those have colliders on them. So we can put our foot, our calf, our right leg. Uh, I put the wrong calf right there. There we go. Our left foot and left calf right there. All right. For the right upper arm, We need three things, because when you cut off an arm like this, it's, you need to be able to take everything with it. And then the ragdoll that's created will decide whether a hand is missing, or the forearm and the hand are missing. But we need to include all of that for the, from the upper arm down. So that's three colliders. <clears throat> the right upper arm, the right forearm, and the right hand. Do the same thing for the left upper arm. Left upper arm, left forearm, left hand. All right, so we have the right forearm colliders. There's two of them. Right forearm, right hand. Left forearm is two, left forearm, left hand. Upper body colliders. Now this is everything that's considered in the upper body, which means arms, head, torso, everything. I think it's 11. Let's find out. No, actually, it won't matter. All right, let's go. We're going to go for the... This is fine one. Yep. And then we have this spine. head, we have the left clavicle, the right clavicle, left upper arm, left forearm, the left hand, oh, it's actually 12, the right upper arm, the right forearm, and the right hand. So essentially we've just laid out everything that's considered upper body. Now we need to lay out everything that's considered lower body, which is pelvis, left thigh, left calf, left foot. Right thigh, right calf, right foot. All right, we don't have any extra colliders, so now our colliders are set up. Let's go back up here. We only have this one skin mesh uh, for the head. Let's go ahead and say we're going to use body dismemberment, which opens up the rest of these right here. So we got right hand. There's only one mess associated with the right hand. So we go to right hand right here. Left hand. There's only one mess associated with that. So we go to the left hand. The right legs, there's only one mesh associated with that. So we go to the right calf. The left legs, there's only one mesh associated with that. Go to the left calf. Right upper arm has three, because we have to put the right upper arm right here, the right forearm, and the right hand. The left upper arm. has the left upper arm, the left forearm, and the left hand. Now we do the right forearm, just two. Right forearm, right hand. Left forearm, which is also two. Left forearm, left hand. 
of her body. Let's go with... Let's try that. 11. Alright, we'll get the head. We have the left forearm, the left hand, the left spine, the left spine 1, the left upper arm, the right forearm, the right hand, the right spine, the right spine 1, and the right upper arm. Wow, I got it right. The lower body, I think it's 7. And we have the, let's see, left calf, left pelvis, left thigh, right calf, right pelvis, right thigh. And your character using, you're using may have a different number of these, depending on how you split it up. It may have more. You may have some extra spots you need to use, and that's what these are for. So let's say, let's say up here you have a, sp a, a slice where you can shoot off the top of the zombie's head and it'll expose its brain. Or you can shoot off this portion right here and it'll expose uh, an extra a section of the body. And how you would do stuff like that. Or maybe like in the other example, you had like a canister on the back that can blow up. All that stuff can be considered extra. And the way you can do that is by putting a trigger over here that sits out more than these triggers. So you could make you could bring these triggers in a little bit so that they sit inside the body more and have this one stick out a little bit more so that if they hit it, it's gonna cause that section to fall off. But that's that's the reason for the extras. But since we don't have any extras on this model, we just leave them blank. All right, now we have to actually tell the system what uh, body parts to spawn. Now this process is kind of time consuming. I'm going to go over a few of them for you, show you how it's done. Um, but first, let me go to our, our ragdoll, unlock that, and come up here. And I'll talk about this ragdoll logic script for a second. This script is essentially almost identical to what we just did in uh, for the character setup. You drag things in just the same. Um, in fact, this, this section right here is identical. The difference is that there's not as many colliders in the ragdoll. As you can see, there's no hands, there's no feet, there's not a net collider. So that you, when you do your colliders, it's a little bit different. But I mean, it's it's doing the same thing. And if you have blood objects, uh, stuff that's going to spawn here, you can put them here. But I don't. Have, there's none on this model, so I'm leaving this uh, empty. I'll have a tutorial on how to set this up at a later date. The one um, one of the bigger differences is, is are the eye meshes. So if you go in here, some characters have eyes that are attached differently. This one has its eyes as part of the actual character. So, or part of the actual head, so we don't have to put an eye, left or right eye mesh. That That's perfectly fine. Um, the top of this is used for, uh, are you using pooling? No, we're not in this example. Is this the upper body? No. Well, it may be, because we may do an upper body. Of course we will. But uh, is it a solo mesh? What this means is, is this mesh a mesh by itself? Like the hands are a solo mesh. The head, if it only has one mesh like that, or the hand, that's it. It's a solo mesh. And I'll, and I'll show you an example here in a second. All right, so we're going to create our first body part. And it's pretty simple to do. What we do, I'm going to go ahead and hide this just to... We take our zombie ragdoll that we've already made and duplicate it. And bring it forward a little bit. All right, we're going to start with a head. Let's call this the zombie. Head. 
All right, and this is pretty simple. We just go through here. We're going to turn off all of those renderers so they don't show. And then we're going to go to the biped. And we're going to start getting rid of stuff we don't need. So, let's see. We don't need anything in the legs. We don't need a pelvis. We don't need either of the legs. So we'll remove all the joints, all the colliders, and all the rigid bodies. This is important because we don't want anything to uh, be pulling on the character. So we're going to remove this character joint on the spine. We're going to go and remove everything off the arms. Take a look. All right, now all we have is that. Now, if we press play right now, you're going to see something that's wrong. I'll go ahead and press play. Oops. I need to make it where it doesn't maximize. All right, this will work. Oops. I'm going to remove the character joint just for a second. We're going to re add it here in a second. You notice it's being pulled. Something. Ah, there it is. Whoa, that's weird. Make sure there's not any other interesting. I think I may have found a bug. Not in my system, in Unity. Never seen anything like that before. All right, let's make sure that that didn't do that on anything else. Oh, there it is. Head has a richer body. Wow, this is really bizarre. Of course, this happens during the video. Well, at least you'll know. <laughs> this happens to you. What's going on? All right, let's make sure we don't have any things still here. There's one. All right, now this is what I was trying to show you. Notice how it's stretching. The reason for this is that the skinning for the head is not just skin to the head bone. It's actually skin to other bones. So we have to include those bones. And just from doing this before, I know that it's the neck. So we're going to add a rigid body to the neck. And we're going to add a capsule collider. Now, we need to make it fairly small. Put it on the x-axis, give it a small height, even smaller, let's go on in there, and really take a look at this. Alright, make it a little bit bigger than that. Alright, now let's move this in a bit closer. Just like that. Alright, so we got the neck. It's got a rigid body and a collider. This we can put about 
put two on that just to weight it right. See if that works. And now we need to add a joint back to this. Drag the neck rigid body to this right here, to the joint. And now let's press play. reason why that disappears is you can come to mesh head and you put on update when off screen. There it is. And we've got our head. Looks pretty good. It continues to roll because it's a circle. But we got our head. That works for right now. So what you do is you go to your zombie head. You go to like your dismember example here. Drag it down to create a prefab. Uh, since this is a solo mesh, I would go ahead and check this because it just means it's not going to do all the logic to make sure or it's going to hide meshes and stuff. It just makes it faster. Let's go ahead and hit solo mesh right there. So the zombie head is done. We're going to do um, one of the tougher body parts, and I'll explain why. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to do the right upper arm, which poses a couple of issues that we need to take care of. Ish basically because when we cut up a mesh, we want to keep it away from parts that are not necessarily part of the mesh we want to do. As an example, let me go ahead and duplicate this guy. Bring him forward. If I was to hide the right upper arm, you'll notice that where he cut this is actually part of the torso. So he's getting weights from three things that are along this line. This lower spine, the middle spine, and the neck which means we have to move those with our body part. Best practice would be to cut right here so that you don't have any of this affecting your arm. Just your arm muscles right here. But we can, we can work through this. I'll show you how. Go ahead and isolate it. I'm going to call this the right upper arm. I'm going to go to this and start removing everything. Uh, go to the left arm and remove its stuff. All right, now we go to the spine. We need to make sure. Okay. So if you want to know, see an overview. We got this right here. Now the spine actually needs to have its collider removed. Remove that. So. First thing we're going to do is we're going to go to our right clavicle. We're going to add a character joint and a capsule collider. Let's make that just on the x axis. Let's see, seven, six, six is good. Move it over. Nope, not up. Move it over. There we go. That's good. Now we're going to go to our neck because remember I said we have a neck, spine, and a lower spine to connect because they all have weights associated with this arm. So let's go up to the neck and add a joint and a 
capsule collider. Scale it in, bring it in like that. You can already see what the actual problem here is going to be. Is you have these extra colliders that you have to use out here. Alright, so we've got the neck. We need to connect the neck to spine one. We need to go to the clavicle, right clavicle, of course. We need to connect it also to spine one. We need to go from spine one, doesn't need to be connected to anything. We're going to actually change its weight, though. Let's change its weight to about one. We're going to go all the way down to this original spine, which also has weights associated with this. And we're going to add a rigid body. Actually, just add a joint, so it'll add both. We're going to connect it to spine 1 as well. It does not need a collider. So, let's look at our... Go ahead and connect this to the... The right upper arm should be connected to the clavicle. So we have the forearm that's connected to the upper arm. Upper arm is connected to the clavicle. Clavicle is connected to spine 1. We have a neck that's connected to spine 1. We have this lower body spine that's connected to spine 1. So we've created this little chain right here. Let's go through and make sure we don't have anything missing. Or any added things that will mess things up. Good there. Okay. Now let's uh, give it a shot and see what happens. It falls. Awesome. As you can see, there is stuff swinging down there. If you mess with your uh, your settings for your uh, actual rag dolls for your joints, you can keep that from happening and make it look a little bit better. But for now, it's good enough for government work. So we can take our right arm and drag it down here. All right. Now I'm not going to do every single body part because as you can see this takes a little bit of time, but I am going to show you, we're going to move on and I'm going to show you an already cre completely created um, uh, body part section. So let me go ahead and show you all of those and I'll talk a little bit about them. Okay, now that we have our uh, body completely split up, we can go in and get the, uh, the limbs ready to be dismembered. So what we're going to do is going to select everything but the upper body, remove the ragdoll logic script, and then add it back on. The left leg, we're going to go down one at a time and, and set this up. The left leg is a solo mesh. That's all you have to do. Put the uh, head, it is also a solo mesh. That's all you have to do for it. Right leg is a solo mesh. The upper body is already done for us, except for we need to check is upper body. And for the right forearm mesh, we are going to add a uh, right hand skin mesh render from the actual hierarchy of the right forearm. That's all we need there. For the right hand, it is a solo mesh. You don't have to do anything. For the left upper arm, we're going to have to do a couple things. One, it needs a right hand. And it needs a right forearm. I'm sorry. the left hand and a left upper arm. No, sorry, left forearm. 
needs two of those. So we have the left forearm, the left hand, then take the left hand up to there. For colliders, you're going to need to put one left forearm collider, which would be four. Now we go to the left forearm. The forearm just needs a single left hand collider, or not left hand uh, skin mesh renderer. That looks good. The left hand is a solo mesh, doesn't need anything else. The right upper. Needs a couple things, just like the uh, left upper. It needs a right hand mesh and a right forearm, which is two. The forearm and the hand. And then we go down to the colliders. We go to the right forearm collider. It needs one right forearm. Boom. Now we just go through and save all these. All right, and after they're saved, we hide them. But before we can really uh, test this character, we need to add all these limbs into the correct spots. So you can add, you go to wherever your limbs are, wherever you save them. In my case, it's under body parts and dismember example. And then you just drag the limbs into the body parts to spawn section. So zombie head goes to the head, right hand, left hand, right leg, left leg, and so on. Alright, now we can go ahead and give it a shot. I've got our zombie here. Shoot his hand off. That works nicely. Upper arm, looking good. Forearm, like that. Go ahead and take his head off. And he dies. Looks pretty good. Let's do this again. Leg, yep. Other leg, yep. Head, good. One last time. Click him here until he dies. And it looks pretty good there too. So, as you can see, we've got our care character being dismembered properly. What you can do, and what I'll show you how to do, is how to use unlimb deaths, or just the event system, to make this character die when its legs get taken out from under it. Or, if you had a crawling animation, you could make it switch to the crawling animation once a leg has been taken out. Right now, whenever the head is finished off, it kills the character because the head has the same health as uh, the total character, but it has the multiplier, so it takes it up over the total health. Um, uh, the next set of tutorials I'm going to do are going to focus on the actual explaining all the different variables in the in 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 the inspectors for uh for bloody mess. So I hope this tutorial was helpful. If you have any questions, feel free to email us at uh heavy diesel softworks at gmail.com and I'll see you in the next tutorial.